Okay, we're back at the sink now. I've got that super hot, super heated kale. I'm gonna put it in this cold bath of water. All right, I'm gonna get a pair of uh, tongs and just move it around in that cold water. Let's just tap, tap cold water, right? Nothing fancy. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm blanching and freezing some kale. Now I've made videos on, I've made a video on, at least one video on this before, this topic. But in this video, the one I did before was sort of small scale production. <laughs> the video I'm doing today is more large scale. It's uh, getting close to the end of November. And uh, the kale is at its best because we're getting frost every other night. And uh, that's really good for the flavor of the kale. I got a lot growing in my garden. So uh, this is the best time to blanch, freeze, and preserve it. You blanch it, you freeze it, press it into a little cake, freeze it, put all those cakes in a bag, stick them in your deep freeze if you have a deep freeze. And uh, that's, the, for me, that's the best way. You, yeah, you can make kale chips and all kinds of stuff like that. but. I don't find that to be a, the best way to capture the nutrition value of the kale, let's put it that way. Uh, so, also the energy cost of uh, making kale chips is extraordinary compared to, just, compared to just blanching and freezing it. So anyway, don't want to get off on a diatribe on that. Uh, in this video, I've picked a lot of kale. So I went out in the garden this morning and I filled this box with kale. And I don't mean I broke, uh, you know, broke pieces off and stuck them in, I mean I, I snapped off a piece of kale. I pulled the uh, foliage off the stem, left the stem in the garden, and put the foliage here. Right? So, so this is all leaf, no stem. All right? Now, I know the stems are edible, and you can eat the stems, and I do eat the stems, and I eat a lot of them, and I use them in lots of different things. When it comes in blanching and freezing, I have so much kale that if I kept the stems, um, it would, uh, there wouldn't be enough room in the freezer. <laughs> If you get a piece of kale this long, it's half, at least half stem, half foliage, right? And the flavorful part is the leaves, and those are the part that when you blanch them, they shrink and get really small. So just from a storage point of view, from a space point of view, and from a, you know, the most nutrients are in the, in the actual leafy part, right? The stem, most of that's fiber. It's still nutritious, but... Um, you know, that's just, this is a diatribe I can talk about all day because I, every time I say I'm throwing, I'm not eating the stems, people will freak out. I eat my stems, my stems are so healthy, you should eat your stems. Look, I eat my stems, okay? I eat my stems, I eat my broccoli, I eat my vitamins, right? But um, for this process here, I'm just using the leaf part, all right? So uh, <laughs> let's not get sidetracked here. Okay, so um, first step is to wash the kale. All right, so um, all I'm doing here is I got a sink full of water. And I got another sink over here, which, which is, you know, the drain's open. So I've put the kale in here. I'm sort of, I move it around and sort of give it a bit of a squeeze, right? And then, you know, you never want to pour your kale into a colander. You lift it out. If there's any sticks or sand or particles or whatever, right? You want to give those little particle, non-kale particles, let's call them that, every chance to stay in here and not go over here with your clean kale. All right, so that's all you do. You just lift, lift it out, give it a little bit of a, a shake, right? And hopefully anything that's uh, not kale will just go down to the bottom of the water here uh, by virtue of, of gravity and lack of buoyancy, <laughs> okay? All right, so that we can drain that. Okay, so we got an entire sink full of kale, right? This is the kale we're going to blanch. Now, other than shucking the kale off the stem, that's all the prep I do. Uh, when I cook the kale, I cut it up a bit finer, but it, I just do that when I thaw the kale out. I mean, you have frozen kale, you thaw it out. It's very easy to, it's much easier to cut up when it's been blanched and frozen and thawed. So I do that at that point. Okay, so now I got my water boiling, salted water, and I got my kale, so it's time for the next step. All right, so here we are, I got a big pot. This is like the sort of thing we'd uh, cook lobster in here in the Maritimes. And uh, it's, uh, oh, about three quarters full. It's up full about this much, so I don't know what that would be. Uh, three, four liters of water, All right? Three, four quarts 
uh, with about a tablespoon of salt. So it's salted boiling water. So when you got this much, I'm using this much water because it, it doesn't, the heat of the water doesn't decrease a lot when you add the kale to it. And I can use this for multiple batches, okay? So I've got this bowl here. This is like, you know, like a good sized salad bowl full of kale. All right, all this is gonna go in the pot. All right, that's how I do it anyway. And it's only going to go in for about a minute, really. Basically until I, for me, it's, it appears to have gone limp. Okay, so I'm going to push that down into the water. Get every little bit there. Piece of fell on the floor there. I'm gonna move that around a little bit. I got one of these uh, sort of strainer things. You can, I got this at a Chinese grocery store, but you know, you can buy things like that maybe at a dollar store or, you know, similar sorts of things. It's, it's, it's like a, a tiny colander, <laughs> right? All right, so I'm going to let that go for about a minute. So while that's happening, I'll just explain the process to you. It's going in the boiling water for a minute. You're going to take it out. You're going to put it in a bowl. Then you're going to drop it in a cold water bath. I got my sink all set up. And then you're going to strain it out and you're going to put it in a uh, little container to make a cake out of it. So all that kale, which is for me, that, the amount of kale that goes in this bowl, this bowl is about a 12 inch diameter uh, mixing bowl, the kind of thing you would use to make a cake or something like that. That's the amount of kale uh, for a family of four we would have as a side dish with a meal, right? We'd all, we'd all, the whole thing would be eaten in one meal. To me, that's the right amount. Uh, you know, adjust that up or down depending on your, your preference, right? Uh, okay, so this is just about ready. All right, so we're gonna, to my mind, this is blanched enough. It's gone limp, and uh, you know, the structure of the kale has, has changed enough that uh, we can store it. It's just, you know, the great thing about this, this approach is that the, the, it, sh it shrinks so much. And yes, we're losing some of the, the nutrients um, in the water. That's true. We're also losing some of the oxalic acid that's in the kale, which your body's got no use for anyway. Um, so, I mean, it's, you know, it's sort of look at it as a yin-yang type thing, <laughs> I suppose, right? Um, you know, if you're the kind of person that eats all your kale raw, uh, great, more power to you. But, you know, if you, if you like it cooked, which I do, I prefer it cooked, um, this is a good way to do it. Okay. So now I've put the kale in a bowl. I'm going to put the lid back on here to get the, the this water to stop boiling now, right? So I'm going to bring the temperature back up by putting the lid on. And while that's happening, I'm going to deal with uh, this kale. Okay, we're back at the sink now. I've got that super hot, super heated kale. I'm going to put it in this cold bath of water. All right, I'm going to get a pair of uh, tongs and just move it around in that cold water. Let's just tap, tap cold water, right? Nothing fancy. to stop it from cooking, right? I mean, it's, it's cooked enough. You could eat this right now if you wanted, but you know, so the next, when I, when I thaw this and, and you know, use it in a, a cooked kale dish sometime in the winter, um, the, uh, it only needs to be cooked for a, a minute basically, right? So it's another advantage to uh, blanching and freezing it like this. It's, it's sort of ideal for, you know, a weekday meal. You just, in the, in the morning, you take a cake of kale uh, out of the freezer. Uh, you put it in a, in a bowl like the one I just had this in. And you fill the bowl with water and you just leave it like that all day. When you come home, it's totally thawed out. And you just cut it up. It's kind of in a brick. right? You cut it up and use it to make your kale dish. I got lots of, uh, if you don't know how to cook kale, I got lots of videos on how to cook it. And, you know, and of course, they go on YouTube. There's practically infinite number of videos on that topic. All right, so now I've got that, got that out of there. The next stage is to get it into a little, little container, right? So I'm just gonna take that, try to get as much of the water out as you can, but it doesn't have to be all the water. So you see how we went from this bowl being full to it being in this little, you know, quart jar here. 
And now what you want to do with the quart jar, right, is press the kale down. You know, really compress it so that it takes up as, as little space um, in your freezer as possible. I like to push it until I can sort of see the, uh, the, the water starting to, right, right, you can see the, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the water gathering, right? Um, and I don't drain that water. I think that water just makes it that much more, you know, it kind of protects the kale when it's in the freezer because it makes it kind of airtight, right? So you push it down like that. So that's about an inch from the top. And you just place that in your freezer for overnight. And the next day, you pop it out of the container and you put it in a plastic bag and you just keep adding bricks of kale to it. Hey, it's a couple days later here and I just thought I'd show you this. So we're just using the camera microphone here and the lighting's not very good. But this is the general idea. Um, let's grab a couple of these. You can see the freezer's quite full. But here's a brick of kale, right? That's, you know, that's the idea, right? So we got, you know, Here's a bag. I got two two bricks of kale in the bag here. Here's another bag of two bricks. So I mean, if you were to take this, uh, kind of do this one-handed. Right. So I pop that thing out of the uh, freezer. Right. That's what we got. Brick of kale. <laughs> And they don't stick together because they were frozen before they went in the bag, right? Just each one of these pops out of the uh, a plastic container. And uh, if they don't want to come out of the container, just put some uh, warm water, you know, put the container upside down, pour some warm water over it, they'll, they'll come right out. You just sort of massage the size of the container a little bit. And you stick them in a bag like that and, you know, uh, these, are, these bags aren't really big enough to have any more than two or three. But anyway, that's a, that's a lot of kale right there. Solid brick delicious meal for February, March, April months when I've got no kale growing in the garden because it's, you know, all dormant. That's how you make a, a blanched and frozen brick of kale. And I mean, if you were to eat this, mm, it tastes good just like that, actually. <laughs> I love kale. But uh, anyway, if you're hungry, you can just eat it now, sort of thing, right? But <laughs> you're freezing and you're preserving the kale at the height of its flavor. That's a good way to do it. All right, so I'm going to continue with this and just keep keep working this kale. It's it's not a complicated. Once you get the water boiled, it's it's not a complicated process. I'm going to be I'm probably going to have about um, three or four cakes of kale, and it's probably going to take me another five or ten minutes to get that all done. So it's it's not a complicated process. And that's, you know, just that much more. I got more in my garden to, to get, but that's, that's the process I go through for uh, freezing and uh, processing kale when I'm doing it in large amounts this time of year when I've got a big garden full of kale, but the frost and the overnight temperatures are so cold that they're actually damaging the kale. Not completely damaging. Kale's pretty tough, but it's getting so cold at night that some of the foliage is actually getting uh, damaged from the cold nights. Um, which also improves the flavor of the kale. So it is time to start picking and blanching and freezing. And then you have all that wonderful kale uh, for, the, um, for the winter. So uh, yeah, not a difficult thing to do. Very easy and so convenient later on in the winter. Uh, you can have that nice fresh kale. When I, I've, I've actually done the comparison. I've bought kale at the grocery store and cooked it and put it side by side with my thawed out blanched and frozen kale, my kale tastes better. Of course it tastes better. It was grown in your garden with your good soil, right? So I uh, hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Um, check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, have fun in your garden and have fun blanching and freezing your kale in your kitchen. Thanks for watching.